Hello everybody, my name is Ord, and welcome back to the Ord Narrations channel. Today we're reading a story about a woman whose metamor is a good girl bully. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you won't miss the latest upload. Alrighty, for those of you who don't know, a metamor is your, like, your lover's lover. It's quite a common thing in open relationships. It can get messy though. So, their post reads, My partner, 37M, and me, 30F, have been together for three years. He started dating this 32 female, who did not want a label. But when I moved back to the country they live in, she all of a sudden wants the girlfriend label. My problem is, I feel like I'm experiencing my worst high school moments again, where I'm very blatant and direct, and she finds a way to bully me in a subtle way, and I don't know what to do about it. And he doesn't seem to see the problem. One example is her saying that she didn't think I was important enough to be at a shared Christmas celebration and saying she did not understand that him and I were dating, which she did know. She gets away with saying she doesn't understand a lot, and mostly when things don't go the way she wants. A second example is when I met her for the first time, and she seemed nice and wanted to talk, but the next day the conversation and meetup did not go the way she wanted, so she flipped the script and said that I didn't listen to her. She then goes into blocking me, hiding because she's scared, and she says, only two months later, come back with an excuse. When I told her I don't want any contact with her anymore, she told my partner she hit the right spot. It feels like he always takes her side. I can't even describe how, because I don't understand how she does it. But when I set a boundary, she's able to make me look like the bad guy for not wanting certain things. And I feel like he agrees with her. I don't know what to do about this, because no matter how open and honest I have been, I keep getting out to be made the bad guy. I was never able to win from my high school girl bullies, who always find sneaky ways to exclude me and make me the problem, and I feel like I'm reliving the same shit with her. Advice, anyone? Someone left a comment saying, Your partner is a bad hinge. You shouldn't be hearing all of the little details about what your metamorph says. Go parallel. If your partner starts to talk about his other partner, stop him and change the subject. Plan fun and interesting dates with your partner that let you get to know each other better and spend quality time together. Between dates with him, go out with your friends and get involved in activities that are important to you and start meeting other people you might want to date and build relationships with. I'm pretty sure that when you meet a good person who has experienced being a good hinge, you will wonder why you ever put up with this man, his indiscretion or his drama. Someone replied to this saying, came here to say this and seconded. The relationship is with the partner, not with the meta. Parallel is valid, it's healthy, and can be very helpful. Don't let anyone say differently. Someone replied to this, saying, Not only is parallel valid, but there's a lot of variability and grey area between pure parallels, i.e. knowing the other partner exists, but never knowing more at any level, and not being involved in any aspect of the life at the same place, at the same time, etc. And KTP. Uh, I don't know what that means. I think Garden Party is one model of the, the in-between, but many things can be in-between. OP is too enmeshed, way too fast with Meta. And Meta does not want to be that either. Saying essentially, yeah, when OP says they do not want to have any part of Meta moving forward. I wonder who decided they need to be friends and spend time, etc. My guess would be the Hinge. And if the Hinge will not share his life with OP, i.e. Christmas plans, then she has to decide if she accepts what is essentially a secondary friend with benefits role. Hinging is not easy, and yet so important to do well. So is communication, expectation management, and figuring out approximately what type of connection you have. If one wants a full partnership, and the other is only capable of fuck buddies, something has to give or the relationship ends. This hinge sounds like he may have set this up to fail once OP was in the same place and time as he and the meta, basically giving the meta the primary role while denying anyone while denying anyone was primary to OP, or allowing the meta to take that role and not doing his part to set boundaries. I don't know. One way or another, if it were me, I would not be in this relationship any longer. He either lies to make his life easier or refuses to set good boundaries because it makes his life easier. Emotional safety is a part of good poly to me. I would be out. He cannot provide any level of trust, reliability, or support. So what is OP getting exactly? Someone else left a comment saying, Why do you know these things? Does she tell you? If so, stop spending time with them. Does your partner tell you? Tell them to stop talking about your meta. But if I were you, I'd get the ick for my partner for being attracted to that kind of behavior. OP replies to this saying, 
I know both things because he told me. We were trying to plan a shared Christmas when I expressed I was uncomfortable with that. I asked how he saw that and what she wanted to make it more comfortable. That's when he said she thought I was not important enough to be there and she had not expected that. So that's what he told me. And for the second example, he got mad at me because she did not feel like I listened and told me I was mean and horrible. So yeah, he tells me. Someone replied to this saying, he is sowing the problems here. Why would he tell you that? I've had bad matters. As much as they're responsible for their own actions, our shared partner was being a bad hinge. As yours is here, I also can't help but wonder, what is he telling her? Why does she think you're not that serious? Where would she get that idea when you've been dating longer? In my experience, that either means she's in denial about polyamory, or your partner is telling her that. OP replied saying, I think it's a mixture of things. So yes, I do think he's downplayed our relationship, but he seems to do that with the relationship they have as well. Secondly, I lived in my home country temporarily, as she did know him and I were together. I had my stuff at his house, lots of OP pictures and my artworks in the wall. I would travel one weekend a month to see him, or he would come to see me. Nevertheless, she denied and kept saying, I did not know, while she put her toiletries next to mine and her clothes in the closet. So when I met her, it took months for her to finally reach out to me after trying for a while. I wanted to clear things up. But she continues to act like I'm nothing, blocked me on everything, telling me she did not want to talk to me. Then just months later comes back to flip the script and apologize and says she has a hard time understanding things around her because of her ADHD. Which is so strange, because I also have ADHD and I don't have that problem, so it feels like a weak excuse. So when I set a boundary, I'm the bad guy again. Then, in this apology, she also makes snarky comments. I've immigrated and need to learn a new language, etc. And so I'm learning and working really hard to build a life here. She tells me in the apology, you seem to know what you want and you put everything into making that possible. After telling me I went through hell, which I did through several circumstances and I was open about that. I don't know. It all feels snarky and tricky. I never know when the she slash they will flip the script. I noticed that for me in the former relationships, it was normal to check up on matters with them or through my partner. Just general interest in how they were doing and if things are okay for shared meetings, etc. They say, I see she's absolutely not doing that. She also mentioned she doesn't do slash label slash want polyamory or any labels of her relationships. I have decided to ask her not to contact me again and at some of the people's advice here, do parallel poly. Since I don't feel safe around her and I feel like she's not willing to work towards anything for over a year and a half now, that's going to take me to change some of my expectations on my relationship with my partner and take some more distance and be less involved and invested in his life. <clears throat> Completely agree. OP, it sounds like you sort of made the right move already. Someone else has left a comment saying, having read your post history and the fact that he became violent towards you while discussing this issue, I implore you to leave. Besides the fact that he clearly has no respect for you or your relationship, he cheated on you and then he abused you. If you live together and your finances are entangled, I would consider securing a safe exit plan before broaching this again. If broaching it at all, honestly dipping out of there safely should be your priority. Do you have a wider support network you can turn to? OP replied to this saying, unfortunately, I do not have a support network here. I also got laid off from my job and in three months I will lose my house. So I'm desperately looking for solutions. Him and his family, two brothers, know what happened and are the only ones who can support me. Someone replied to this saying, you're in an okay position. It's a good start that you have support from his family. And by the sound of it, they've provided you with a roof over your head once before while you were looking for work. And depending on the country, there should be women's shelters and charities with online access options in your area that can offer resources, job hunting support, and possibly even emergency accommodation. Eight months is still quite a significant amount of time. It gives you both some breathing space and timeline in which to disentangle yourself from this person. You don't owe him anything whatsoever by way of an explanation. Him and his affair partner have continued to ignore your very reasonable boundaries and opportunities for communication, and genuinely that ship has sailed for them. Your priority now should be yourself. First port of call is to look into the outside resources from domestic abuse shelters and charities. Should secure another job and prepare his family for the possibility that you may need additional help in the coming weeks and months. Reaching out to shelters is a really, really good idea. Good shout. Tricky situation. Okay. What do you think OP should do? What would you do in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the latest upload. Alrighty.
We'll have to leave that there. Thank you very much for listening. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.